Hey, good morning, church. It's Thursday. Thanks so much for joining us for another day of 15 Minutes in the Word. I'm joined with Katie and Jonathan. And we say this a lot, but we've really enjoyed making these videos for you. And so if you've been joining us each morning, thanks for being there. Um, we have been moving really quickly through the New Testament over the last few weeks. And then this morning, we're going to conclude another book, the book of Colossians. We've been in Colossians for the last few days, and it's been a fantastic read. Uh, Paul, again, has never met this church. He's actually in prison when he writes this letter, but he wants to still encourage this church, even from a distance um, in the gospel. And that's really where Paul's been going for the last few chapters, is he obviously did a beautiful kind of poem in chapter one of the supremacy of Christ. And now he starts talking about how when we're united with Christ, that union draws us away from idols. It draws us away from just religious, stale tradition. And it calls for Christ to be the sinner. And he says, be rooted in him, be built up in him. And when that happens, we begin to be transformed as a people. Mm -hmm. And he says, this transforming power of the gospel is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. And so I think we all agree that's enough power to transform us. Mm -hmm. That is power. And it's at work in us. It's actually changing us that we no longer walk in the way we used to walk, but now we walk in a new way, a new life. And so that's where Paul has been taking us, and especially in chapter three. And again, in chapter four, he's gonna get real practical on how the gospel has an impact on every area of our life. No area of life is exempt from the gospel. And so we're excited to jump in to conclude Colossians. Before we do read though, Katie, would you mind opening us up? In Absolutely. Prayer? Father, thank you so much for who you are. Um, help us to remember as we open up your word that you are good, that you are in control, and that you have revealed yourself to us um, in your word and in, in your son, Jesus. And Spirit, I just pray that you would um, help us interpret these words that we are about to read together. Um, and may it transform our hearts as we um, are transformed more and more into the likeness of Jesus. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, let's begin. <clears throat> Colossians 3, 18 through the end of the book. Colossians 3, 18. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not embitter your children, or they will become discouraged. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything, and do it not only when their eye is on you and to curry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for their wrongs, and there is no favoritism. Masters, provide your slaves with what is right and fair, because you know that you also have a master in heaven. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Tychicus will tell you all the news about me. He is a dear brother, a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. I am sending him to you for the express purpose that you may know about our circumstances and that he may encourage your hearts. He is coming with Onesimus, our faithful and dear brother, who is one of you. They will tell you everything about what is happening here. My fellow prisoner, Aristarchus, sends you his greetings, as does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas. You have received instructions about him. If he comes to you, welcome him. Jesus, who is also called Justice, also sends greetings. They are the only Jews among my co-workers 
for the kingdom of God, and they have proved a comfort to me. Epaphras, who who is the one of you and a fellow servant of Christ, sends greetings. He is also wrestling in prayer for you, that you may stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. I vouch for him that he is working hard for you. And for those in Laodicea and Hierapolis, our dear friend Luke, the doctor, and Demas send greetings. Give my greetings to the brothers and sisters in Laodicea and to Nympha and to the church at their house, in her house. After this letter has been read to you, see that it is also read in the church of the Laodiceans and that you in turn read the letter from Laodicea. To Archippus, see to it that you complete the ministry you have received in the Lord. I, Paul, write this greeting in my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be with you. <clears throat> so again, a beautiful conclusion to an already fantastic letter. Mm -hmm. And so Paul really begins describing how this gospel, it transforms us. It renews us. And in fact, it, it transforms all areas of life. And he really gets into a lot of the practicals here. And so we've been reading and kind of discussing through three grids. How does this passage show us the heart of God? What's this passage show us about ourselves and how can we respond or apply this passage to our lives? And so Katie, John, as we're looking at this passage, what grabs you, what stands out? I feel like just God is so good at turning culture on its head so many different ways. And this is one of them. I mean, the Roman culture, like you said earlier, the, the Roman household would look totally different than what Paul is listing out here mm -hmm. and what he's encouraging them to do. Um, as wives, as husbands, as children, fathers, slaves, masters. Mm. And um, and I love how even the verse, I know that we're starting at 18, yeah. but the verse right before it, and whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. He just got done talking about like when we live our lives, we do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Like mm -hmm. It's because of the gospel that we are submitting to one another. We are serving one another. Um, and the fact that, you know, he talks to the slave masters and tells them to, I mean, provide their slaves with what's right and fair. Like that is so anti or like, you know, oh, yeah. against Radical. the culture, what's yeah. the norm that they had. Yeah. I, as I read this, these passages so often they they can be misused and yeah. taken out of context. And I, it, it's funny. I, I think the first hearers of this these, this passage, verse eighteen, they're totally like, "Yeah, wives submit." And verse mm -hmm. uh, twenty, they're cool with children obey your parents. It's <laughs> nineteen and twenty one is more ra radical, yeah. where husbands are to love their w lives, and mm -hmm. and it all goes to, and especially the slave passage. I just cringe, and my I, dander gets dander is that a word? <laughs> dander gets up when I when I read it. I'm like, oh, I don't I don't like that. I'm not comfortable with it. But when you step back and look at it, uh, if you look at verse 24, the end of it, it says, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. And as you mentioned earlier, David, um, the whole context of this is that we're all serving Christ and that he is our ultimate master. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's certain passages in here that make us uncomfortable, but knowing the, the culture of what's going on, uh, it, yeah. it's something that we have to remember that when we submit ourselves to Christ, uh, it's the, the purpose is to glorify him. If you kind of want a more detailed explanation of these opening verses, Paul does this in Ephesians 5, which we read several weeks ago, maybe days ago, years ago, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but he really expounds it. And I love at the opening uh, of Ephesians 5 is he really clarifies a lot of confusion that comes with these passages where he talks to husbands and wives, and really all Christians, and he says, submit yourselves to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And really when that first submission is taking place, of where we, I, as a believer, am submitting myself to the Lord, and if I am a husband and living out verse 19 to love my wife and not to be harsh with them, then that obviously allows that beautiful environment for my wife to follow me and to mm -hmm. trust me. And obviously when I haven't submitted to the Lord and I haven't um, treated her lovingly and I've been rude and a jerk, that's obviously much more difficult. And so we see where Paul is balancing this out, especially in light of the rest of scripture. And then we obviously we get to the slave passage. It's very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And Paul says yeah. elsewhere, hey, if you're a slave and you can get your freedom, <clears throat> go get it. But what we see here, and this is really, you know, very ahead of its time, mm -hmm. where Paul's really saying, man, if the gospel finds you wherever you're at in life, um, whether you're 
a husband who's kind of a patriarch and can kind of lead his house in, with an iron fist and with fear, or a wife or a child or even a slave. We all have this equal dignity in the gospel. Yeah. And that's one of the more powerful things I, I see here. And, and he says that when we come to Christ, um, it doesn't matter what position of life we are in. Um, there is equal footing at the cross, that when we are united with Jesus, that the gospel, whether you're in charge of a household or at the bottom of a household, you are now equal, one, in Christ. And Paul said that earlier, right? There's no slave or free, Jew or Greek. We're all now one in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And so that frees us, right? And again, there's a, a good juxtaposition here at the start of chapter four, you know, masters, Provide for your slaves because you also have a master. And so it's not as if anyone in the kingdom of God is ruling in their own authority and they are just autonomous and a, kind of a, a rule unto themselves. But the gospel actually puts you under the authority of Christ. And so now we rule not with fear and manipulation, but we are now called actually to have a, a self-giving love yeah. to others. And so the gospel completely transforms everything especially this cultural situation yeah yeah and that it flows well into uh verse five where it says uh be wise in the way you act toward outsiders make the most of every opportunity and no matter what station you are in life whether you're a patriarch or you're a slave or you're a slave owner when we make the most of every opportunity we we kind of see with eternal eyes and we see every person every human being as a creation of god a child of god and if we, we have that perspective, it can make life so exciting. Like every interaction we have, we have the opportunity to be involved with eternity, with, with loving others, with mm -hmm. sharing the gospel. Maybe not even verbally, but just showing one, one little tiny bit of love. Absolutely. Really quick story. My wife, we were in New York and my wife had the opportunity to, to help someone up some stairs. She was an older lady and just, mm -hmm. and I, you know, she, she probably would cringe if I'm telling the story. <laughs> But the fact is she was really living in that moment, just in that moment where she was feeling like this is eternity. I'm helping another human being, another creation of God, take advantage of every opportunity to show his love. Absolutely. I mean, lately, you know, I've been on Twitter more, I guess, lately, just keeping up with everything going on in our world and our culture. And not that I only get my news on Twitter, but I get, we get to follow a lot of yeah. really faithful brothers and sisters in Christ. And I love getting to hear everything going on from their perspective. And yeah, one thing that's been talked about a lot lately, and I love that it's being talked about, is the Imago Dei, right? Mm -hmm. The image of God and how that is on every human being, that we all carry the Imago Dei. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think if that begins getting deeply rooted in our hearts, that absolutely transforms political stances, um, cultural stances, it, it, it dismantles all of that because we see people, even if our ideology or politics or worldviews are different, that the Imago Dei screams from chapter from verses five and six. Yeah. yeah and because of the Imago Dei, we act wisely and graciously towards outsiders. Yeah. That they don't leave us saying they were rude and disruptive and jerks and uncaring, but they walk away with a very different experience, or at least they should if we are believers in, yeah. in Christ. Yeah. So it completely transforms everything. And hopefully they feel valued. Hopefully, you know, they leave a conversation with a believer in Christ feeling seen and valued and heard. Um, but like verse six, let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know um, how to answer everyone. I feel like a lot of times we, we uh, have that last part just fine. We mm -hmm. always have an answer for something, especially on social media. Like every, we always have, we're ready, you know, our fingers are ready to, to type, but seasoned with salt and full of grace. That's the biggest part. And just approaching those moments with humility. Um, and that's what the, yeah. that's what the power of Christ that you talked about earlier, um, the power of the gospel, like it should transform us so that we are full of grace in those convert and those hard conversations mm -hmm. and not walking and not um, fleeing from those hard conversations, but pressing into them with humility. And mm -hmm. may we be known as a people who, who do that. Amen. And I love, we, we can't skip this part. It's just sprinkled in there right at the end. Um, when you're looking at, at verse nine, um, but Paul mentions uh, a guy named Onesimus. And if you've been reading through the New Testament, 
the whole letter of, of Philemon <clears throat> was Paul writing Philemon, who he had a slave that ran away, who was Onesimus, this guy. And, and that's a crime punishable by death. And then Paul is seeking to bring the gospel to the situation and persuade Philemon to accept Onesimus back, not as a slave, but as a fellow brother in Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what he that's says awesome. there. He is coming with Onesimus, our faithful and dear brother. Mm -hmm. And so really Colossians ends with a beautiful, saturated, just dripping with gospel. And it's a huge gospel punch right at the end of saying that this is what the gospel does. Onesimus, you might have used to view him as a slave, unworthy of your time and attention, but the gospel got to Onesimus, and now he is our fellow brother in Christ. And so that's the power of the gospel. It unites people that should otherwise be divided because we are now united mm. in Jesus. Yeah. So church, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for just a few moments in the scriptures, and there's so much more we could look at and discuss, but we do thank you. Thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you so much for what he has done for us, what he's doing in us as he transforms us, and what he desires to do through us as we live as your people in this time, in this space, in this city. So Father, help us to look more like Jesus. Help us to follow him better. Read his word. May the spirit be transforming us so that we look like him and that when we are with outsiders, um, that our conversations would be seasoned with salt and they'd be gracious, they'd be life affirming and they would point others to Jesus, which we, we see in the Sermon on the Mount, that they would see our good deeds and glorify the Father. So do that work through us, we beg. If we need to repent, let us repent. Mm -hmm. um, and may we be reassured of what we have in Christ and what that means for us and how that changes everything. We pray this all in the great name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.